Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Inventor Material Libraries. So the first thing to understanding about the Inventor Material Libraries is just understanding where they're defined or where Inventor understands they're allowed to pull them from. So I've already opened up my project dialog box. You can see here that I have a line item for the appearance libraries, and if I expand that out, you'll notice that there's some Autodesk Appearance Library, or there's an Autodesk Appearance Library, an Autodesk Material Library, and an Inventor Material Library. And then also under Materials, I have an Autodesk Material Library and Inventor one as well. The Inventor ones are bold because they are set as the active one, and I can change that on any given uh, part whenever I'm in that there is a place to change that. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the Inventor Material Library is read-write, the Autodesk Material Library and the Autodesk Appearance Library are read-only, and that's because they're shared across all of the Autodesk products. If I open up Navisworks and I am using a material from, say, the Autodesk Material Library, when I take this Inventor file that's using one of those Autodesk Material Library files over to Navisworks, it's the same material definition. So Autodesk made this change years ago just to make it a little bit easier for you when you jump from product to product. Now I can add additional ones. If I go here under my material library, I can right click and I can say add library and it'll ask me to save a file somewhere uh, on this machine or on my network. Notice that, that it is an ADSK LIB. I'm not gonna change this one here. I'm just gonna cancel this. But if I hover over the uh, other ones here, you'll see that the path, the Inventor one is in my public documents, the Autodesk uh, Appearance Library and Material Libraries are in, say, common files under the Autodesk shared folder. So one other thing to kind of bear in mind here is that the use style library read, write, or read only will also impact my ability to make changes here. So I'm going to right click on this and change mine to read, write. One thing that I tell most CAD managers and, and users is you want to leave that read only just because you don't want to inadvertently make changes. When you know you're going to make a change, it is then appropriate to change that to read write, make your changes, and then switch it back. Uh, so that's what I'm going to, the approach I'm going to take here. So I'm going to change it to read write, save, and done. So what I'd like to do next is I'd like to walk through the process of taking an existing material, copying it to a read-write library, and making some changes to it for my own purposes. So I'm just going to open up any old file. I think it's easier just to start a blank part file to do this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start a blank part file. And up here at the top of my screen, you'll see that I do have my material library and I do have my appearance library. I, I mentioned when I was at the previous screen about having, say, the inventor material library being as my active one. You can see at the bottom of both of these drop downs, there is the ability to switch over to a different library uh, on a given case. So I'm going to stay on the inventor material library on both of those. I'm going to hit this thing that looks like a, uh, a checker ball, and it's going to open up actually the material browser. So uh, a couple things about this dialog box here. We, I have the home. I can switch over to a different material library if I have to. Everything down here is all of the libraries or all the, the individual materials in a given uh, library, and I can then copy those and make changes. Now, uh, in this case, the Inventor Material Library is read-write. Uh, let's switch over to, say, the Autodesk Material Library. I'll say I'll find one there that I want to copy to my library and, and make some changes. So uh, I know a couple years ago I was working with a customer, and they had um, 836 Steel. And that wasn't one that was in the Inventor Material Library, but it was available in the Autodesk one. So I'll, I'll find that one and use that as my example. So here is this steel ASTM A36. So because this is in the Autodesk material library, I really can't make any changes. You can see here as I hover, it's got a lock icon on it. So how do I change that? How do I get the ability to, to add that to another library? 
So if I right click on this, I can assign to a selection or I can use the add to document material, document materials, favorites, or the inventor material library. And when I do that, you can see that the inventor material library is broken down into classifications or categories. So let's say I want to make a change to it and then push it into my inventor material libraries. So I'd have to push it into my document. So there's this ASTM 836 metal. If I right click on this, I can say edit. I could change any of the categories here. I'm going to change the name to just say custom or something like that. So I know it's the one that I've made. Notice that the type is material. I can add additional uh, options here. There is a default appearance associated with it as well, which I could then customize under information, some more information about this definition. On the physical tab, gets into the physical attributes of this material that would be utilized if you were going to do an FEA analysis. I'm not going to make any changes to this. I just kind of wanted to point out that's where that would be able to be done. So I'm going to say, okay, I just really changed the name. So here's my A36 or, or yeah, the A36 custom material that I created. Now that I've got my edits made, I can right click on this, add to. I can add it, add it to my inventor material library because again, that is a read write one. A lot of our customers have created material libraries specific to them. And I think that's a, a great idea. Uh, it's just a matter of then you have to copy over the ones that you want. So I'm gonna push this to my inventor material library. I'm gonna go under the, the metal here and tell it to put it into that classification. So now if I switch over to my inventor material library, I should see my steel ASTM A36 custom. So that's been pushed into the library. Now, one other thing I will point out here that because I did the right click and save to that inventor material library, I didn't have to really bother with the manage command, but I was doing some of this recently. And uh, occasionally I would go to the manage tab here. I'd hit the save. And it would tell me, oh, this material needs to be saved to your library. I've done it. I, I did that by adding it to that library. If you've made an edit, you can either, again, push it back to the library through the dialog box. Or if you go to the Manage tab, say Save, it should see that the, uh, the information is there. It's actually complaining that this library hasn't been uh, migrated yet, which uh, you can see here it's looking at this uh, color plate local that it sees that there's a slight differentiation there. I'm not going to save it back to the library, but I wanted to point out that that is another way to get that material that's in this document into your library if necessary. So there is my brief overview of the inventor material libraries, how you can set which one is active, how to copy some from one library to another, how to make changes, and then how to get those changes back into a library for further use in other documents. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. You can email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.